Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Musella Foundation Brain Tumor Webinar Series. Tonight's topic is oral gallium maltolate, and our special guest speaker is Dr. Jennifer Connolly. Dr. Connolly is board certified in internal medicine, neurology, and neuro-oncology, and she is the principal investigator for the phase one clinical trial on gall gallium maltolate at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Uh I do have to say this has been a marathon, uh, you know, drug development uh, never happens fast enough. And, and, and as much as we wish it would happen overnight, it doesn't. Um, but we've made significant strides in, in really a short period of time. So our preclinical work for gallium multilate in glioblastoma started in 2013. Uh, we, for, we had the first publication of gallium multilate in GBM uh, come out in 2018. We uh, opened the clinical trial in March of 2022 and enrolled our first patient shortly thereafter. Along the way, though, we've been continuing to push forward even um, outside of just working on the phase one trial. Uh, last February, we received uh, FDA orphan drug des designation for adult and pediatric glioblastoma. And then most recently, uh, we, re we received fast track designation um, in December of 2023. So we have much to do. Uh, we have a lot um, that we're looking forward to in the future. Uh, one of our uh, biggest focuses right now is the EAP program or expanded access program to um, allow patients who are not eligible for clinical trial opportunities to um, receive gallium multilate um, when they have no other treatment options. Uh, we are working on developing the phase two clinical trial to follow up our phase one trial. And then we've done some preclinical work in the pediatric brain tumor population, and we're currently in the early phases of designing our uh, of clinical trial for pediatric brain tumors. So this is a marathon, and you know it takes a team to run a marathon. And so I have to acknowledge Strain for the Brain and Chasing Chad. Um, who helped fund some of the initial preclinical work done with gallium multilate at the Medical College of Wisconsin. And of course, the Misella Foundation, who has supported us along the way, and especially with the phase one trial, uh, IQAI, and the Freighter and the MCW uh, Cancer Center Foundation. Also have to thank, I have a huge team behind me. This is not just my work. This is definitely a team effort and collaborative effort um, from the beginning, um, but a special thanks to patients who are willing to entrust us in their care and participate in research um, to help us try to find that next best treatment. So thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Connolly. And actually that's a perfect segue, um, thanking our, our patient participants um, because we have two patients from your trial uh, on the call today, and um, we're just going to ask them briefly to share, you know, when they were diagnosed, uh, what their treatment journey was that led them to your trial, and what their experience has been so far in the trial participation. Um, so I think, Linda, if you can come off mute and turn on your video, we'll give you the floor for a couple minutes. Okay, sounds great. Um, my name's Linda, this is my husband, Al. And I would say two and a half years ago? Approximately. Two and a half years ago. She doesn't remember. I much. don't. I must have been really out of it. Um, so my daughter and my husband thought there was something wrong with me. And eventually my husband took me into Freighter Hospital because I was not making any sense. So I'm going to let you talk about that. Well, in retrospect, her actual diagnosis wasn't until January 28th of 2022, uh, but there were the symptomology earlier, I guess, were red flags that we probably all missed. So she had her first surgery to remove a seven centimeter uh, tumor, I think February 2nd of 2022. Um, MRIs, radiation uh, followed, uh, chemo pill, um, and then in July of that same year, 2022, uh, an MRI showed either uh, some regrowth and or scar tissue 
So to be on the safe side, Dr. Max Krukoff uh, suggested another surgery, uh, which went way better. Uh, she was awake during the surgery, which allowed him to be much more aggressive. And uh, he thought he'd gotten everything he needed to get. And uh, in October, we started on the trial, I believe, with Dr. Conley. So, uh, and it's been, the, the MRIs have been very positive since then. So it's going on, well, it was over, it was a year in October of 2023 that she's been on the, the trial. Okay. And Linda, what's, what's your experience with the, with the treatment? You know, how do you feel taking it? I feel great taking it. I, I have not noticed any negative things about it. I um, haven't had any, you know, of the diagnoses that other patients have. So I'm happy to take it. <laughs> and it's been really great. So I finally, I said to my husband, I, I finally feel like a real person now. <laughs> so it's been really fun. That's wonderful. And um, so I, I guess you enrolled in October 2022 or 2023. I'm sorry. Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, October, it was October 2022. Yeah. Okay. So it's been over well over a year now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing, Linda. Um, Thank you. That's great to hear. And I'm, I'm so glad you're doing well. Thank you. Um. Samantha and Tim, do you want to come off mute and come on video? Sure thing. Hi, so I'm Samantha. I'm Tim. This is Tim, and um, I told him I would tell a story. So he got his first symptoms in September of 2022, uh, what we thought were migraines, his first ever migraine. And within that month, he had 11 migraines and just, we started notice, noticing just some weird things, him seeming confused, um, balance issues. And so he was then diagnosed with GBM in October of 2022, um, had surgery in October. And then he had another one. Um, the first one was kind of more of just like a biopsy. Then he had one in the beginning of November. That one caused him to have a stroke. Um, so he still is dealing with left side weakness. Um, so he was in a rehab facility for six weeks from November to December of 2022. And while in the facility, he did start radiation um, and chemo, the standard of care. So he finished that in January of 2023. Um, and then in February of 2023, he started the Temidor 523 and then also started Aptune, um, which we were certainly willing to try everything for him. That was a little bit challenging because of the left-sided weakness um, and kind of created a little bit of a safety concern for us. So, um, but then in, in March of 2023, he did have a recurrent. Oh, my daughter hears us talking. No worries. Um, in March of 2023, he did have recurrence. He had surgery again in April um, of 2023. And then in May, we had three options to choose from, two of which included a chemo. And that was hard on him physically, obviously, when he was doing the 523. And um, one of the options also included Optune again. And so we were just kind of weighing you know, what was going to be the best for him. So we decided to go with the trial and it, we've never looked back. It's been a great decision for him. Um, he's had no side effects. So we're, we're just so thankful. Yeah. Okay. That's so great to hear. And um, so then I guess from May, 2023, you're probably coming up here on a year. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing.